welcome back to my channel. We are on to the next part of our Australian Shepherd, um, our Blue Merle Australian Shepherd. We're just going to continue where we left off on the left hand side of the face. If you've got any questions, don't forget to leave them down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and we're just going to get started. So as usual, I'm going to start with my warm grey one and I'm going to finish off um, this muzzle area. Just going to lift this um, bit of graphite. Okay, so I'm going to come in now with my uh, warm grey one. Just doing a nice thin strip at the moment, just so we can build up this area. Okay, then I'm going to go over this with my burnt ochre, and again, I'm focusing on that fur direction. And then blending it into that white muzzle area. And as we come up by this eye, I can see that we've got a bit of the um, burnt ochre in here, but it's not covering that whole section. As it comes up here as well. Okay, taking my uh, nugget now, we're just going to create the colours in this area. It's again following that fur direction. And then my burnt umber. And then I'm going to take my beige red and I'm going to use that beige red to blend that burnt ochre in as well. Going back to my burnt ochre, just going to apply another layer of colour. So a bit of a harder pressure now just to really build up that colour and that depth. And then I'm going to take my walnut brown. And again, I'm just coming in and adding some detail. Nice sharp pencil, just a few little lines to build up the detail in there. Now taking my sanguine and I'm going to very lightly start to bring that in along this edge. So this is like a darker orangey tone, not as bright as the terracotta, so it's quite nice for this area. And then I'm going to go over all of this area. Oh, hang on, I need that sanguine down here. A bit more. Take the burnt ochre again, just down here, nice hard pressure. Okay, and then I've got my green gold. Over the top. Like so. And then it's back to the uh, warm grey one. And again, I'm just going to follow the fur direction with this base layer. 
So we've got quite a bit of detail going on underneath this eye to add in. So I'm just going to do kind of this section here first. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is take my walnut brown and I'm going to map in that darker marking underneath. So I'm following the fur direction and I'm just lightly mapping in that darker marking that is underneath this bit of fur. We will come in and darken it all up as well. And it comes down this edge to where we've got that other bit of fur in that we drew in the last part. Like so. And then I'm just going to very lightly take my burnt ochre over the top. Beige red. So again, this is like we've been doing, just building up the colours rather than focusing too much on details. Obviously, we've added this bit in, but focusing on those colours. Back to the nugget. And okay. Back to the warm grey one in this area. And my burnt umber. So again, I'm just following the colours, adding the colours in that I can see. To bring that up here as well. So, taking my dark sepia, just darkening up that marking now. So I'm using harder pressures. I'm oops, sorry. There we go. Harder pressure. To build that up nicely. Just gonna come in now with this uh warm grey warm. Okay, so I'm going to take my nugget. So this is all now about just building up these colours. Burnt ochre. I'm just going to very lightly apply this burnt ochre, following the fur direction, but using this as almost another base layer. Oh, so this area is part of the tan marking, so... Okay, so I've taken my sanguine. I'm 
just going to start to build up the colours now. So medium pressure, not pressing too hard, we're still just slowly building up all the nice colours that we can see. I'm going to take my cinnamon. This area down here is quite pinkish rather than the bright orange colours, so I'm just going to add the cinnamon. And we can blend that cinnamon into the um, sanguine. So I'm blending the cinnamon upwards and then I can come back in with the sanguine following that fur direction. I'm going to take my burnt ochre over that sanguine area. And then the green gold. Going back to my uh, nugget. And the burnt umber. Like so. Right. Back in with my um, burnt ochre. You can see now we're starting to really build up the face here. Okay, and then I want my burnt sienna. And you're going to use the burnt sienna again quite lightly. And then the cut mortem just to really darken underneath. Oops. Trying to keep it all in focus, but not doing very well this time. Okay, back to that burnt sienna. Sanguine and then I'm going over the top of all that again with the green gold. Okay, then the sanguine again, so it's just back and forth now, building up the details. I wonder if I zoom you in a bit more. Right, let's see if that will keep it in focus for you all. So, sanguine again. I'm going to get my cinnamon to 
Ben sana. My friends, okay. And then again with the green gold. And then I'm just going to use that beige red. Nice hard pressure over the top. It's going to help smooth everything out. Back to my dark sepia so I can start to fill it build up a darker marking and I'm increasing my pressure now so that I'm really getting those nice little details and take my burnt umber and just doing the same again, but just building up some of the depth Oops. in this fair with the burnt umber instead of the sepia. That's that nugget. And then the beige red again. Okay, and then I'm going to take my slice tool and we're just going to create some little details. Again, following that fur direction. By bringing in this detail, it's just going to add more depth and a few little extra highlights to our fur. Right, let's move down um, this tanned area. So back to the warm grey wool. Just going to lift that graphite. And I'm just going to cover this area that's left where there's going to be the tan colours. just move you okay so you can see all this tanned area Okay, so I'm going to start with my cinnamon, nice light pressure, we're just going to start to build up again the depth in this fur. Burnt ochre. Now a lot of this we will blend into the white fur, so don't worry if you've got quite a harsh edge 
in this tan bit, once we come around to doing the white fur, we'll be able to blend it all in nicely. I'm going to take the uh, sanguine Now remember mine's going to look grainy, don't worry if yours don't doesn't, the more layers you add We're just ignoring the fact that mine has the grain and the texture Back to the burnt ochre And again, we're using the polychromos because they're very translucent. We're going to start to see all these colours shining through all the layers. Creates a really nice effect for fur, especially fur like Australian Shepherds, which are double coats, big fluffy coats. It's nice to see all that colour shining through. Take my burnt sienna. You can see it's starting to really nice blend into that area we've already drawn in. And then we'll put Martin. Back over that with the uh, burnt ochre. So I'm just trying to smooth out my grain a little bit more. Just trying to get my areas as smooth as possible. And then I'm going to just sharpen this. Okay, so coming back in now with that burnt ochre. Taking my cinnamon again. Back to the burnt ochre. Now remember we have got whiskers to add. I'll be adding them at the end. So a lot of this is going to be behind whiskers. But you still want to focus on the fur direction. Let me take my sanguine again. And then the green gold. Over the top. Okay, I'm just going to take my nugget. We've got a bit of a dark area here, so I'm just going to finish the nugget to create that. Okay, so, so that is the oh, the beige red. I'm just going to, but this is now like this side of the face finished. So let's head on over to the right hand side and start mapping that area in okay so i'm now going to start with the ivory and this side is a lot lighter in color which is why i'm coming in with the ivory and i can also see those nice yellow tones in this fur so this is our base layer Okay, then I'm going to take the light yellow ochre In 
then this is like another bass layer, it's going to act as an undertone on this fur. And then the burnt ochre. Again, I'm following that fur direction at all times. I'm going to take my uh, cinnamon and then the nugget Get my dark sepia. And then the burnt umber. Wow. Okay, and then we're gonna take our terracotta. Increasing the pressure now, we want this to be quite nice and vibrant. And the burnt ochre. Going back to that light yellow ochre. And then my uh, beige red. Okay, so you can already see the difference between how light this side is compared to the left hand side. Okay, back with our ivories, the base layer. And then I'm going to take my cinnamon and I'm just going to follow the shape in the, uh, the fur direction. It's like curving around that cheek. So you can kind of see the shape there that it's making. So that's the shapes, uh, the direction that you want to make, follow, sorry.
and then over the top of that we're going to take our cinnamon again following that direction Okay, I'm going to take my Kaput Mortar and just going to start to build up this nice area of that marking. And then the uh, Burnt Umber. Or by the nugget. Back over with the cinnamon. Increasing my pressure now. Just get my dark sepia and just mapping in those darker markings. Okay, back in with the ivory. I'm just going to map in this area now. So we're mapping in the area that's left of the tanned fur. It's a nice base laying out of the ivory down. So I'm going to take my burnt ochre first of all. Just going to create this darker area of fur. So again, we're following that fur direction as usual. I've just moved it so that you can see the bottom of this tanned white area. So literally just following the third direction, just building up with the burnt ochre. First of all. And then I'm going to take my um, sanguine. And again, following the third direction. I'm always going to say it. You'll you'll get sick of me saying it, <laughs> but it is important.
sweet my burnt sienna And then I'm going back to my um, sanguine. Right, I'm going to have her again. Okay, and then the green gold. Followed by the beige red just to help blend. Okay, I'm going to take my um, terracotta now. Do a few layers with terracotta. The Okay. Just want to take my um, burnt sienna nice and lightly, but we do have a bit of a darker area there. And my terracotta again. And then the light yellow ochre. Followed by the beige red. And then I can take that sanguine. I can just kind of push that colour upwards now. So, okay, just gonna take my ivory back over the top as well, it'll help blend here. And then I'm gonna get my slice tool. Add in some details now.
so okay going back now to this warm grey one and we're just going to get some of this grey fur in So the final part after this um, tutorial will be quite a quick one because it's just the white fur. Um, but at least our little Australian Shepherd will be finished. It's been a fun piece to draw as this one. It's quite nice doing the small pieces as well. Even though it's small, you can still get a lot of detail. Okay, so I'm now going to take my uh, dark sepia. I'm just going to come in. I need to bring this brownish colour a bit further down. Well, maybe not because I'm going to push that up here. That's fine. So I'm just going to create some darker hairs following that fur direction. Remember, it's coming out of the side of this face now. Take my burnt ochre. And then the cinnamon. That cinnamon's just going to help blend that burnt ochre area into this grey area. I'm going to take my uh, my copper first. Okay, so here is what our um, Australian Shepherd is looking like at the moment. He's now got his face drawn in. So the next part will be all about getting um, this area of white chest fur done and he will be finished. If you've got any questions, do let me know down below as usual. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you all very soon. Bye everybody.